I'm Sue Elliott. And I'm Ed Holland. You know, there's some big changes coming for people with developmental disabilities who are receiving services from our state. In this second part of a two-part series, we're going to focus on changes that are going to affect tens of thousands of people who currently receive Medicaid personal care. That's right, Ed. Our state is creating a new Medicaid state plan option called Community First Choice, or the acronym is CFC. The new plan will include personal care along with some other very important services. I recently spoke with B. Rector, Director of Home and Community Services for the Aging and Disability Administration, to, about what these changes mean to people with developmental disabilities. In 2014, the legislature asked us to refinance our Medicaid personal care into this Community First Choice, which is a program created under the Affordable Care Act to help states who want home and community-based options and to leverage additional federal match. And so every state has to apply? Or how does one do that? It's considered an optional state plan benefit, so states have the option to apply through a state plan amendment to offer those additional services and get that enhanced federal match if approved. As a recipient, what does that mean for me if I'm a person with a developmental disability and eligible for the service? So currently, a person with a developmental disability might be eligible for our Medicaid personal care program. Um, and the only thing we can provide under that program is assistance with personal care and household tasks. Under Community First Choice, we'll be able to help with those things, but in addition, have skills acquisition training. So f people who might choose to have training on how to do personal care, health-related tasks, or household tasks more independently could mm -hmm. choose that service. We can offer um, backup systems like personal emergency response systems, training on how to be an employer. And then in our state, our stakeholder committee that helped with implementation planning also wants to see specialized medical equipment and assistive devices be part of that benefit. You said we get additional federal match. What does that mean? That means that typically Washington State and a Medicaid program would get 50 cents for every 50 cents we invest. In this program, we get 56 cents of federal dollars for every 50 cents we put forward. So what that generates for us is a general fund state savings that can be reinvested in other types of programs. And do you think our state will re reinvest it? So last year, the legislature already made some decisions to reinvest part of that into additional services for people with developmental disabilities through individual family support services and the basic plus waiver. And then the rest of the savings, which is about half of it, um, is something that we hope in the 2015 session based on legislative language from last year that the decision the decisions will be made at the legislature about where to reinvest those additional funds. Last year's legislation said it needed to be reinvested in home and community based services for individuals served through developmental disabilities administration and aging and long term support administration. For people who are currently receiving personal care, who's eligible for this new program? So people eligible for this program are individuals that are currently eligible for um, Medicaid personal care services. The functional eligibility is a little higher. They have to meet institutional level of care. So the, um, the RHC eligibility for developmental disabilities or nursing facility level of care. Um, so most of the individuals eligible under Medicaid personal care today will meet the eligibility for Community First Choice tomorrow. Uh, there are also individuals with higher incomes coming in through our 1915C waivers that will through that waiver eligibility, be eligible for personal care under Community First Choice. So if I'm currently getting personal care, I'll still be able to get that, plus the additional services that you said would be available. That's right. You know, one of the things that B mentioned that's worth repeating is that people will have additional service credits that they can use to purchase assistive technology and specialized medical equipment. You know, one of the things we've wanted for many, many years is the whole ability for people to learn skills and having the skills training is so important it's an, a really important component of this program so instead of just having a meal prepared for for someone the person if they want to can actually learn how to prepare the meal for themselves that's just an example of what the the skill building will allow of course all of this is dependent upon approval from the centers for medicare and medicaid services 
the federal agency that oversees these programs. If it is approved, it will bring additional federal dollars into our state, and part of that, those federal dollars are targeted to serve up to a thousand people with developmental disabilities through the Basic PLUS waiver. We'll be back in the spring, closer to when the plan is finalized, to update on the final CFC program and service and eligibility process. That's it for this video edition of Informing Families Building Trust. For more information about these changes, visit our website at www.informingfamilies.org.